Hey, it's Chief Denny again with Savvy and Rocket. And what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna jump in. We've got a deal that's come over to us from a real estate agent, it's been emailed. So what we're gonna do is just kind of real quick look at what is sent that we can look at briefly. And ultimately we have to make a phone call to kind of find out, is this a deal? Is it not a deal? So we have to do a little, you know, digging in the surface, going beyond what was sent to find out if this is a property worth, you know, fixing and flipping. What we have is we have like an MLS listing. So MLS is multiple listing service. So real estate agents have their own software, their own database. multiple listing service. Database, yeah. right. Where all the properties are listed. Mm -hmm. And they have information they can share with clients like us, but they have information behind the scenes that they maybe not, they don't reveal to the public. Every different city, every different state, they all have their different MLS. MLS in Los Angeles is different than San Diego, different than Miami, different than Houston, Texas. Yeah. And they look a little different, they function a little different, but it's the tool that whenever you sell your house, real estate agents list your house home and they put it into MLS so all other real estate agents have access to the information. Yeah. And then that information is syndicated and it goes on to Zillow, Trulia, Redfin. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to dive into MLS and we're going to kind of just look at what we, the information we initially have. Yeah. So um, some simple information gives us an MLS number, APN is the legal description, but really we're looking at like the price. They want between $685,000 and $725,000. It's a six bedroom, four bath house. It's in Fletcher Hills, which is a cool part of El Cajon. But what's really critical, remember one of the things we talked about is we want motivated, distressed sellers. Uh -huh. So right here, and it's rare that you get this, but you can actually search like in Zillow or Redfin or Trulia, anything mm -hmm. like that. You can do a keyword search where you can have real estate agents do a keyword search and you can say contractor, mold, uh, motivated, quick sale, something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. So in this one, if we had a keyword search, it would pull up motivated seller, bring all offers. Mm -hmm. So right out of the bat, that's an indicator that, you know, potentially, sometimes agents just put that in there to get you to call. Yeah. And other times it could really be a motivated seller, so we don't know. So. Yeah. Um, what we'll do is we'll just give Rick a call right now because he sent this over to us and let's just have a conversation. So what I want you two to do is we're going to ask him some questions. We're going to go through the photographs, which I've already got pulled up here so we can kind of look at the photos. And just real quick, you can see that the cabinets are older. They got white appliances and black countertops. Yeah. So someone's, it, it looks clean, but someone's done some work. You know, they put granite countertops on, but for the wrong color, with white appliances, with See, the wrong I cabinets. I like the granite countertops, but I think if you just changed the cabinet color and did a different fridge color, it would be fine. Right. But so, you know, we can see just by looking at pictures. Yeah. You know, it's got some updates, but obviously it's just not that sexy of a house. The furnishing, the, that looks like a front door. You can see the front doors, you know. Yeah, it's like, cool. like, it's like a, a little obvious. Church bench too. It looks like a church bench. It really church does. Bench. <laughs> There's a little pew that you kneel on. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. You know, so this carpet's not too groovy. The furniture's kind of dated. You know, the light's dated. So again, you know, we'll just call and kind of figure out what's going on. Hello, this is Rick. Can I help you? Hey, Rick. This is Chief Denny. I'm calling you about the property you have listed on uh, on MLS. It's the property over on Meadow. I just wanted to call yeah. and maybe get some information from you. Sure. What can I tell you about it? Well, I'm kind of looking at the pictures, obviously. The place looks like, you know, there's some upgrades that have been done and it looks a little dated here or there. So I just want to get, you know, a little more insight. I mean, I can look at the pictures, but you know, obviously I'm not standing there. And what intrigued sure. me is, you know, my kids and I are looking at buying a home and you know, the first thing that kind of honestly popped out was motivated sure. seller bring all offers. So obviously that caught my attention. Uh, got it. Yeah. So the, the, it's in a track of homes uh, in Fletcher Hills Estates. Most of the homes in that, that area were built in the eighties. This house was actually built in the 80s as well, but what they did is they took the home down to the studs and called it a remodel uh, back in 2006. So the whole house was completely redone in 2006. It's an elderly woman who's trying to sell it right now, but her husband, who has passed away, he was handicapped. So they needed a home to help him with his, with his handicap, and he was wheelchair bound. So they rebuilt the house with extra wide hallways. All the doorways downstairs are all extra wide to facilitate handicap, as well as the bathrooms were all done downstairs to facilitate the handicap. That's, that's, those are some good features. The uh, Back in 2014, the house was, they put uh, solar panels on there, and at the time it, it needed a new roof. Again. So they put the new roof 
uh, on there with the solar panels. The solar panels are completely paid for and not leased. There's also a separate set of panels uh, to uh, heat the pool water so that the pool heating has solar as well. Now, you can see through the pictures that the most of the bathrooms are all, you know, the original bathrooms from 2006, so they're kind of dated. The problem that we're having with this place is, you know, you can see the market timeline, there's fairly long, and had several people go through, and she's got four cats, and the cats don't like go using the litter box as much as they do the carpet. Oof, that's <laughs> so gnarly. They've, uh, the house smells pretty bad. So that, that's pretty much the, the issue that we're having trying to sell. And we've had a couple lowball offers. Seller, she needs, she's looking to sell. She lives by herself. And with this, you know, the whole COVID thing going on, she, she's not comfortable being home alone. But she'd like to get back to her family. She's got family in Colorado. So she's looking to sell, get as much as she can. You know, this is going to be the money she gets from this house. It's the only money she has to support her for the rest of her life. So she'd like to get as much as she can out of it. She understands that it needs some work. So that's that's kind of the situation. I appreciate you telling me about the cats. I'm sure when you walk in the place, it uh, doesn't smell too great. The, oh, uh, no, that's morning, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, she's moving to Colorado. How soon does she have to move? Is it something she needs to do right away? Is it something, you know, that she's patient? Or is she, it's kind of urgent for her to go? Or what's her timeline? I wouldn't call it urgent. She wants to get back there as soon as possible. Okay. But uh, she doesn't want to leave a bunch of money on the table either. Sure. So basically what we're going to do is once we get the house in escrow and we get the contingencies to remove, she's going to start making her arrangements to move. Got it. And so she's moving in with family or friends or she's just going to take the proceeds and go buy another home? No, she, she's actually going to be moving in with family and she's just going to use the proceeds she, she gets from the home to support her for the rest of her life. Got it. Okay, sounds good. And then you said you had some lowball offers. Can you give me any sense for what they are? Or can I play a guessing game to kind of figure out? Because, you know, I'm looking at it as an investment. Some of it looks really nice. You know, I look at the outside, I go, the house looks great. I see a newer roof. I see the solar panels. That all looks great. And, and I see in, you know, the information that you sent over that obviously the panels are paid for, so they're not leased. So, you know, a lot of good things. But then I, I look at the... I think it's gray. I don't know. The gnarly carpet and then dated doors and, you know, the, the red walls and the, definitely the dated bathrooms, which are, you know, are challenging. You know, she may have renovated it, but, you know, as an agent, you know that the combination of items chosen, the cabinets and the counters and the flooring and the color, just, you know, probably is not ideal today. So I'm just wondering, you know, I don't want to waste time writing a, an aggressive offer that you would just say, no, that's ridiculous. But at the same token, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to overpay either. So... I don't know if you can maybe I, share. We, we had a couple low offers. They were in the sixes. Okay. Uh, that wasn't attracted to her. So I would say, you know, if you want to make something for her to even think about, it, it's got to have a seven in front of it. Okay. So, and I noticed you have the value range marking between 685 and 725. So she really wants to be in the seven range. She wants to be. But I mean, as time goes by, I mean, you've been on the market for 179 days now. And okay. as time goes by, who knows? Um, you know, I would just say, if, you know, if it, you see it as something that might work for you, let's write an offer, let's get it, you know, get started in the negotiating process. I, I'm not going to tell you her bottom of line course. number. Of course, right. Me. You know, I always say, let's just get started and, and, and see where it goes. So, it, kind of a totally random question, but if this house was dolled out, you know, someone went in there and, you know, redid the flooring, redid the kitchen, redid the bathrooms, obviously it's, you know, a large house, 3,300 square feet. But if someone went in there and completely renovated it and put it back on the market, and if we brought that deal back to you, you know, assuming we can buy this thing and we had you represent on represent us on the sales side, what do you think you could sell this house for if it was completely fixed up and put back oh, on the market? If it be renovated, yeah. It, it'd probably sell in the low to mid eights. Got it. There's a good $100,000 spread there. Yeah, easily. Okay. I mean, and, and, you know, this might sound like too much of a personal question, but the seller, do they own the house free and clear? Do they have debt on it? Do they, you know, do they own it outright? She's got a small mortgage on there. So she's, she's going to walk away with a, a good chunk of change, but it's not free and clear. Okay, got it. And then is she potentially, I know this is always kind of a weird question, but would she potentially be a little creative if we came in with a good chunk of money down? Would she be willing to carry short term? 
because you know if we gave her enough cash where she could move and get situated in, in I think you said Colorado, can we give her enough cash to satisfy that need, make sure that your commission is covered, have her create a little bit of paper so that we can get in there, renovate it, put it on the market, and then have you sell it for us again? Would she be open-minded to that? I seriously, I mean, I, typically when I take a listing, that's one of the questions I ask, and, and she's pretty much said no um, to that. So I, okay. I would say, for now, I, I don't, she's not that desperate. Got it. But we can maybe present an offer like that and no one would be offended. I mean, it's not going to put you in a weird place and it's not going to agitate her so suddenly she's pissed off at you. I mean, could we maybe start in that location and kind of see where it goes? If we gave her enough money to where she felt comfortable? Uh, I would say write, you know, write something up and I'll, I'll be more than happy to present something like that. Yeah, and present it in the best light that I can. Okay, that's good. In that market, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with Fletcher Hills. I mean, how still hot? Things selling quickly? Absolutely. Yeah, there's such, there's just extremely low inventory right now. That's good. And if we turn around and have a successful offer, what would you list it for? If we just turn around and buy it from you, and I'd have you write the offer as well, because you know, I can either bring in an agent and, and not have communication, or we can work with you directly. Obviously, you get the double end the deal, but you know, it eliminates the the confusion of too many cooks in the kitchen. So. You know, we can have you write the offer and then have you relist. So ultimately, you know, it's doubling the front end and a commission on the back end. So what kind of so discount what would, would you give us? Is, what, what would I list it for once it's renovated? Yeah. What, what would you, what's your commission on the back end if, if you're getting three oh, commissions out of it? I don't like negotiating my commission over the phone. I'd be willing to give you a, a, a break. But I mean, when I list, when I list a property, I mean, when we, I spend a lot of money in marketing a lot of time. I might I'd give you a, a little bit off of the commission. I mean, obviously we got to give away sure. part of that commission to whoever brings the buyer. I'd probably be willing to do it for like 2% or something like that on my right. side. Yeah, that's reasonable. I mean, it's better than three, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> <For you. laughs> yeah, it's pretty easy for you because you know the house when it wasn't looking so pretty and then you know the house when it is looking pretty. <laughs> yeah, no, the history behind it as well. Yeah, exactly. How about that pool? That pool looks pretty dated. The pool needs to be resurfaced. It's got some staining in it. It's not anything that's, you know, uh, structurally wrong with the pool, but it does have some staining in, in the bottom of the pool. And some of the coping around the outside is cracked, so that's gonna have to be addressed as well. And we've kind of factored that in as far as, you know, where we priced it. Got it. Okay, sounds good. And the pool it, pool equipment, you said it was solar, but the pump, everything worked. Everything in the house functioning, does it have AC? Yeah, it's got two ACs actually. One okay. for the upstairs and one for the downstairs. Well, that's functioning in good condition. Have you had a home yeah. inspection on it by chance or no? Not yet. No, I okay. have a home inspection. I didn't know if maybe another buyer wrote an offer and had a home inspection. I haven't All right. got that far. Got it. Well, I mean, it kind of gives me the, the basic, you know, information I need to know about the property. Anything that you, any curiosities you have or anything you need to know about us or? Well, I mean, uh, is it something that you guys, uh, it sounds like it's something you guys are going to flip. You're not going to buy and hold or anything like that. Yeah, it would definitely be a flip. I think it's a, it's a great neighborhood. Obviously, you know, it's a large home. It's got a heck of a bedroom bathroom count. It's got a swimming pool. And the outside looks like it's pretty good. The inside is just a little, you know, it's just kind of blish yeah. bloshy and just needs carpet. You know, I mean, you need a ton of work, but I mean, it's, it's in a really great location. I mean, it's one good thing about this place is You've got four bedrooms downstairs, and two of the bedrooms have in-suite bathrooms. So it'd be a great home for, for someone that has a large family and maybe wants to have mom or dad or mother-in-law uh, stay with them, and you know, it'd be a great thing for that. And, and as well as with the kids, it's uh, really close to the Junior Seau Sports Complex, which is kind of like a YMCA type deal. Mm -hmm. um, and it's right down the street within walking distance. So location, you just, it, it's a really good location. Got it. Sounds great. Well, do you two have any questions? I don't really have any questions. I think we kind of agreed that like it would be somewhere in the eights after it was renovated and all of that. And it's a 3,000 square foot home. I would kind of push it towards like the low nines. You have a different area. You think you get 850 out of this or you think more eight and a quarter? I, I, I would start at 850. I mean, I've definitely, I might even start a little higher than 850 yeah. to see where it goes. Yeah, I, I, would, I would say that, you know, mid to, mid to low ace, you know, being conservative. Right. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Do you have any questions? Well, not necessarily. Pretty straightforward. Okay. How's the education in the neighborhood, like school wise? Oh, it's in a good school district. Okay. Yeah, it's in a very good school district. The elementary school, not too far away. 
uh, high school, Grossmont High, not, uh, just right across the freeway. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Grossmont yeah. College, yeah. right? Is that nearby? Grossmont College isn't too far away as well. Yeah. Okay. So you got elementary school, junior high schools, and college. And then you said the bathrooms and pretty much the whole house had been redone so that it's more wheelchair accessible. The downstairs, yes. The downstairs. Uh, okay. Very, very wide hallways and doorways. It's easy to get you know, a wheelchair around for sure. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and the bathroom is looking nice with the shower and everything like that. You know, it's just a big wide open area almost. Big closet right. too, that's always good. What's the blue room downstairs? Is that a bedroom? There's like a blue room with a big fan in it with a bathroom. Is that one of the en suites? It's just a big bedroom with a uh, bathroom that's attached to it. That yeah. particular bathroom is attached to the bedroom, but it also has another doorway on the other side of the bathroom that goes into the hallway. So. Okay. It would be, a if you had chill. guests, that would be the bathroom that the guests would use, but it's also attached to the bedroom as well. Okay. okay, so Jack and Jill bathroom. All right, well, I don't have any additional questions. We're gonna look at the deal. We're going to, uh, you know, obviously put together some numbers, and then if it's something we want to write an offer on, uh, what we'll do is we'll call you, you know, have you write, a, write an offer up for us. I would, and the, the seller would also appreciate you guys actually seeing the property if, if at all possible before you wrote an offer on it. Sure, no, absolutely. We're just, you know, kind of mindful of COVID and some people don't want to show their property. Some people do want to show the property. So, you know, we, we're trying to do as much as we can with the photos we're looking at. So uh, sure. yeah, we would schedule an appointment with you and, and come right. view, yeah. you know, physically I, walk the property. You know, to, see, to, to accept an offer site with, without you guys seeing it is, it, you know, in my experience, I've run into some issues that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have another question really quickly. Are there any damages to the house that you might know of? Any like crack slabs that need to be fixed? Fletcher Hills has kind of a reputation of having a lot of crack slabs. Okay. That's on the east side of Fletcher Hills. This house is located on the, the southwest side and there's there's just very little uh, crack slab issue on that side. Okay. So good. no, not that I'm aware of, I'm gonna put it that way. Well, I was going to ask if maybe you knew, and maybe I'm wrong to ask this, but if uh, her husband passed away in the house, because I know that's something that we have to disclose to future buyers. Passed away in the hospital. In the hospital, okay. So right. it's not haunted. <laughs> it's not haunted. Well, <laughs> I can't promise that either. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate your time. What I'll do is I'll send you an email so you have my contact information. And like I said, okay. we're going to work some numbers up. And then, you know, if we decide to write an offer, you know, we'll, we'll call you. We'll go look at the property, walk the property, and then um, have you present an offer to your to your client. Sounds great. If you got any questions in the meantime, feel free to call. All right. I appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Thanks. Well, Thank you. Have care. a good one. Bye bye. So one of the things, real quick, is when we look at this house, you know, it's kind of one of the one of the things is it's you know it's got some really cool things like the outside could be with some corbels and a little bit of painting could corbels? be corbels well, corbels are little details that go underneath the eave of the roof oh okay. kind of give it a little gingerbreading some corbels and some paint maybe some shutters could make it really cute yeah. the inside is far from cute you know everything's gonna need paint everything's gonna need flooring that's really cheap but it's three thousand square feet so that's yeah. always it's a hell of a lot of home panel yeah. on the outside of this house that's siding. Siding, okay. Yep. So as long as that's in good condition. I mean, I would paint that white. I would do the trim brown. And See, there's all kinds color. of there's all kinds of different things you can do. Replace you know, like the, the garage windows. Well, the door's fine, but get the windows out of there. Yeah, well, and those are things we'd have to see where the budget is, where the budget is. And it looks like it's got new retrofit vinyl windows. So that, yeah. you now it's got the solar, it's got a new roof. So potentially the bones are really good. Yeah. But definitely needs a kitchen. Yeah. Sometimes new you can. Cabinets, sometimes you can paint those cabinets. Other mm -hmm. times you can't paint the cabinets. You got to yeah. put new cabinets in. They, they can get look better spendy. stained though. It gets spendy really quick. But staining them is cheaper than buying yeah. all new cabinets. Right. And the market's super hot in that area. So if we painted the cabinets or stained the cabinets and then went with you know modern handles. Yeah. And the, the tiles in the bathroom are gray. So if we maybe did the white, white and gray goes really well. Mm -hmm. So if we painted the cabinets white, new faucets, new light fixtures, new you know flooring, mm -hmm. laminate flooring. Thing is, the numbers are going to be really thin, really tight. Yeah. They probably won't make any financial sense. You know, we can go through a house, look at it, and well, you know, I like make how a phone everything call. is wheelchair accessible as well, too. Because you know, if somebody that was handicapped moved into this house, you wouldn't have to renovate it and do anything else like that to it, like big renovations in regards to moving hallways apart and like right. making doorways wider. So I like that kind of aspect to it. It's already 
and handicap you, friendly. So if you need a wheelchair house, yeah. there's only going to be a handful. A of handful all the homes in San, Diego, in San Diego, there's only going to be a handful of them. So exactly. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so that's how we, you know, an example of how we make a phone call, calling someone, asking questions. A lot of people talk about sales scripts, you know, and it's good to have a, a bullet points on a sales script. I'm not a sales script person. I hate that call when someone calls you at dinner time. Hi, could I speak with Chief Denai? And uh, <laughs> and you know they and you know they're scripting you, and it's like I hate that. I want to have a real conversation with someone, gather the information like you were taking notes, you know, so we know the situation. I just find a, you need a guideline, you know, not the pitch. Yeah. The pitch doesn't work, so I like having a conversation. It flows naturally. We gather the intel we want, and then ultimately, now we have the raw data, we can put it into our analysis and yeah. see if the property makes any sense. And we're not going to find a deal, we would have to make a deal. Yeah, exactly. So even though she wants a seven in front of the number, 700 grand, her situation could change tomorrow. So what we'll do is we'll work our numbers where it makes sense for us. Mm -hmm. Maybe it only makes sense at 625 grand and she wants 725. Okay, well, I'll still write an offer of 625. Yeah. Because that's what makes sense for us. Mm -hmm. All she can say is yes or yes, maybe or no. Yeah. So she says no. We okay. have one more phone call with another agent on another deal and we move forward. Yeah. yeah. If they look at our offer and maybe they get creative, well, maybe we created a deal. Yeah. And if she says yes, well, then voila, we got a deal. Okay. So the most important thing is we'll work on numbers, we'll write an offer. So if you found this video to be educational, <laughs> as oh boy. all of them, here we go again. <laughs> you know, one of the things is it's, it's a challenge to make phone calls. You know, I, you know, a lot of people are intimidated by this thing, you know, getting on this and what do I say and what do I do? As you can see, it was just, it was just a phone call with another human being, getting the data we needed, listening to what he had to say, carrying the conversation along. And if you found that helpful, if you'd like us to do maybe a couple more phone calls and shoot another video on a phone call, if you want to hear them make a phone call, <laughs> <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe. If you choose to do so, you're not obligated to do it, but if you feel like it, you're more than welcome to. But we're not gonna make you do it. <laughs> and I'm just gonna tell you to smash it all. Oh no. <laughs> oh, you'll have to find a better niche for that. <laughs> we look forward to the next video with you. <laughs> <laughs>